Okay, I give you an example. When uh, we have a genetic marker that we can test in every person that uh, tells us whether or not a person is getting a benefit, is responding to an antiplatelet inhibitor, the antiplatelet agent, to prevent blood clotting after coronary angiography and stent placement. When we have that genetic information, um, then it becomes essential that that genetic information becomes available uh, to the doctor who's taking care of the patient at the time the doctor is uh, writing out a prescription, is ordering the drug, clopidogrel, for instance. And so at the time, uh, the doctor has to have the information. One out of four individuals do not respond to clopidogrel. And the genetic test precisely identifies those one out of four. So genetics is the genetic test. It tells us about what is the right medication for a person. But without digital, without digital support systems, that information does not get into the decision-making process. So we developed a clinical decision support system that is in real time, context sensitive, delivering the genetic test result and a recommendation on what to do, whether this medication is okay or whether an alternative medication should be prescribed for the person at the office, at the doctor. So I think in real time, very important information to improve clinical decision making uh, to practice personalized or precision medicine. I'm very intrigued by the possibilities that we have with uh, home or health monitoring uh, with uh, sensors and wearable devices and implants. So there we can uh, derive a whole new set of data that I would predict will lead to a lot of new insights in our understanding of the mechanisms leading to disease, the mechanisms that underlie successful treatments and outcomes um, for uh, patients. I'm talking about data out of daily life to be collected with sensors and variables uh, that to date we don't have available at all. Uh, to date we have uh, data from doctor's office visit to office visit from inpatient stay to inpatient stay, but in between, it's all what the patient or the relatives or friends tell us, but nothing quantitative, nothing reliable, nothing continuously measured. Now we can, for instance, measure glucose continuously, we can measure blood pressure, we can uh, check the heart rate and heart rhythm continuously, respiratory patterns, so we can uh, derive a whole range of physiologic parameters and biochemical parameters that help us much better understand a person's problems as well as manage the problems. I think what's often neglected is the clear description and realization of the benefit that can be uh, attained with digital technologies today and even more so in the future in the practice of medicine. In Germany in particular, but uh, elsewhere as well, we focus the discussion about artificial intelligence, about data, digital data, electronic health records, etc., almost immediately on the risk for the individual with regard to data security and privacy protection or lack thereof. And so the so-called Datenschutz discussion is always the first question that is asked. And we never or hardly ever get to talk about the benefits for the individual. And as with every decision in a person's life, it's always a decision uh, touching uh, benefits and risks. And in this case, I think with regard to digital tools, using artificial intelligence, using electronic health records, I do believe we should focus much more on the benefits and highlight those very clearly for the very important debate in society and policy making. That's a great question. Of, of course, I mean, we 
uh, have been thinking uh, very deeply about uh, the potential for this partnership uh, and the potential to have an impact in improving health and outcomes for humans uh, with digital technologies. So Mount Sinai is a very large health system in the United States. Uh, it, uh, had, they take care of about 4 million lives in the greater New York metro area. Um, they have electronic health records, completely digital, in every aspect of clinical documentation since 2003. Uh, so there's a wealth of data. There's a total of 8 million electronic health records or patient records. There's a very uh, innovative and pro-entrepreneurial uh, um, environment uh, and also leadership of the institution is very much um, um, for innovation. In particular, they recognize uh, the advances and the potential for digital technologies to improve the quality and efficiency of healthcare. They're a health system, they're a medical school. They don't have digital engineering, uh, they don't have uh, computer science, and so on. We are a faculty and an institution of digital engineering with computer science, artificial intelligence, databases, data engineering. So it made a lot of sense to me to bring both institutions together so the respective competencies can be complementary and leveraged in interdisciplinary programs to advance um, impactful solutions for digital health. Okay, now here we're getting into uh, the different ways of uh, dealing with uh, informational self-determination, uh, use of data, data ownership. And you're referring to uh, at least two different models that are established. And we need to think about a third model for Europe. And the two models that are established is that in the US, you have data monopolies by corporations. Uh, so it's in a very capitalist sense, um, data as, a, as an asset. Um, in China, you have uh, data monopoly by the state, by the government. And uh, it is moving towards a near total surveillance of all citizens in every aspect of life, not only health. And in Europe, we're not comfortable with either. We're not comfortable with, uh, obviously, state monopoly on data, governments, uh, as well as uh, we're not comfortable with corporate big companies owning the data that they uh, gather from you know, citizens. And therefore, we need to have a third way, uh, a way of uh, data democratization, democratization through digitization. So this is the concept for Europe where uh, the person who the data belongs to or where the data comes from is actually having a stake and ownership in the data and needs to be informed what happens with the data as much as possible and should also benefit if uh, new uh, insights and new uh, products are created from those data. Well, it is true, in fact, that uh, we have not done a good job in uh, describing and emphasizing the benefits of uh, digital record keeping, electronic health records for our colleagues in clinical practice. We've not done a good job and it appears to them that uh, it is more work and uh, it is uh, not offering any benefits. That's not the truth, that's the perception. The truth is that from having data um, in a digital way, data becomes immediately uh, interoperable, exchangeable uh, everywhere on the planet. So if I today uh, have a patient from Japan in a doctor's office in Potsdam, it could theoretically be possible, and in part it is possible, to have health record data and health data from that individual from the other side of the globe available immediately for decision-making in a practice, uh, in a clinical encounter in Germany and the other way around. And we don't have to go to Japan. We can only go in Berlin, for instance, between the big uh, Charité University Hospital and the other health system, the Vivantes. Both are owned by the state of Berlin. But data exchange between both entities is not possible. So just imagine, doctors should understand immediately that it is in their interest and it's in the interest of their patient's care 
to have data exchangeable and available instantly in clinical practice. And it will make their decisions much more reliable and much more accurate. Yes, so uh, first and foremost, we need to uh, create uh, new platforms to manage health data. And health data is in this case not only the patient record at a doctor's office or at a hospital, which in essence is not about health, it's about disease. These are data describing the state of disease of a person and the treatment. So we're talking about comprehensive health data. We're talking about data that comes, yes, from the clinical documentation systems in clinical practice or in the hospital. But beyond, we're going to uh, collecting data out of uh, people's lives that are relevant to their health. I mentioned before blood pressure, blood glucose and, and other parameters that are so important in managing hypertension and diabetes, for example. And uh, by doing so, we need new uh, types of data platforms, data management systems that can hold a lot of different types of data, including genetic data, and that can uh, allow us to uh, analyze all these different types of data together in real time um, at, at any point uh, in the world. And so to that end, we need uh, new uh, data platforms artificial intelligence ready data platforms and to that end we uh, introduced a new approach that we're taking at the Hasso Plattner Institute at Mount Sinai in New York with our colleagues at Mount Sinai to create such a first of its kind multimodal health data platform. Uh, so this is I think one uh, important initiative that will uh, promote uh, artificial intelligence in healthcare and better quality and better efficiency of healthcare. But to have a real impact on people's lives with improving health, we need to bring, bring product into the market. And we anticipate that by the end of 2020, we'll have our first apps uh, ready to uh, be used by uh, people all throughout this country and as a matter of fact, all throughout Europe as part of our a large European project, Smart for Health. These are apps that put the patient or the person in control of the health data and also provide uh, functions for personalized health services. For example, the app will entail that uh, if a person has genetic data available on the platform, um, the app will have functions that will indicate to the person always the impact and the importance of particular genetic data for their health when it matters. So this is a real-time informed decision-making by the person who is using the app as well as their physician to make the right decision at the right time for the right person. Well, it's, it's very stimulating here, very friendly, it's a great uh, work environment. The Hasso Plattner Institute is uh, all I, I hope for to find uh, as a place of work and employer in Germany. It's very uh, oriented uh, according to a company and American style, uh, yet it is in Germany. Um, and so the colleagues, the, the uh, PhD students, the postdocs, um, the professors, the staff, they're all terrific. We have a lot of fun, so we have typically uh, meetings, starting the day with meetings where we update each other. Uh, we uh, then do uh, respective work. Um, we do experiments together with uh, sensors and placing sensors and digital tools. And we have lunch and uh, sometimes dinner and a few drinks together, so it's, uh, it's a good life here. What worries me, of course, is um, that we do not catch up in shifting the conversation from always talking about the risk and demanding perfection with regard to data and data security, and by demanding perfection, not ever allowing anything to go into practice, that we miss the shift from the status quo that I just described to a shift where we acknowledge that there is risk, of course, 
but the risk is hypothetical and uh, not quantifiable. And the benefit that I described, for instance, with using the right medication for the right person with genetic data and digital tools, the example I gave you, the benefits are clear. And so I'm concerned that we will go on uh, having the conversation with the wrong focus. Focus too much on risk and not enough on the benefits for the person. My hopes are that uh, every person in any country in the world, not only the developed world, also low and middle income countries, where often there's no access to healthcare at all, um, that every person in the world will have a chance to have great service in healthcare, um, much better quality of healthcare, um, and that at a lower cost, and that uh, being driven by digitization and digital advances like online consulting, telemedicine, uh, mail order pharmacy, um, appointments by app, uh, health apps, uh, etc. Continuous monitoring of important health parameters, all of this, I think, will lead to better care for everybody. Well, um, I see the future of digital health very positive and very bright. We now know from a number of studies that have been uh, published recently that uh, most people in our societies actually are open to engaging with digital health or see the benefits, uh, are optimistic about using data to improve their health care. Um, and I think uh, with that majority of individuals and their positive and open opinion about it, um, Solutions will be created that uh, convince everybody that digital health is very beneficial. So I'm very optimistic. I think uh, digital health will transform healthcare in many ways. Not in all ways, but in many ways. And that most people will benefit from it.